TV7 Israel News is made possible thanks to your generous donations. Shalom and good evening. This is TV7 Israel News broadcast to you from Jerusalem and in today's top stories. Violence plagues East Jerusalem as concerns of broader escalation are met with a vigorous response. Palestinian President Mahmoud Abbas voices his deep distrust of the United States in a meeting with Russian President Vladimir Putin. Former Lebanese Foreign Minister Gibran Basil reveals Hezbollah's involvement in the U.S. brokered Israeli Lebanese maritime negotiations. Violence continues to plague the eastern neighborhoods of Jerusalem. Clashes erupted once again last night in the neighborhoods of Sheikh Jarrah, Bet Hanina, and Ras Al Amud. The main flashpoint included the neighborhood of Sheikh Jarrah, where Arab and Jewish youth clashed with one another. According to the police spokesperson's unit, both opposing groups hurled stones at one another, as a result of which 18 Arabs and two Jewish youth sustained injuries. It is worth noting that the majority of those involved in the clashes on both sides were identified as minors under the age of 18. This was also the case in the neighborhoods of Bet Hanina and Ras Al Amud, where dozens of Arab residents of the city hurled stones and firecrackers at Israeli law enforcement troops who responded with crowd dispersal means. Moreover, police forces apprehended 18 residents of East Jerusalem on suspicion of involvement in violent disturbances. Meanwhile, Police Commissioner Yaakov Shabtai visited a number of the operating forces during which he commended them for their hard work. <laughs> It is important to highlight that last night's clashes were significantly diminished in comparison to the night prior, and while disturbances were recorded in East Jerusalem, routine was seemingly preserved in West Jerusalem, where during the day the annual Jerusalem march was held as usual. Hundreds of Christians from around the world representing 70 nations attended the march, proclaiming their love for the God of Israel and its people. We are, we are here uh, to celebrate our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Yeah, and we are happy to be in Jerusalem. <laughs> to bless with Israel and let you know that we love you and we will always be with you and to support you. And we pray for you. We pray for the peace of Yerushalayim. Turning to the West Bank districts of Judea and Samaria, where IDF, ISA, or Shin Bet and Border Police Special Operations Units conducted counterterrorism activity overnight and this morning as part of Operation Waves Breaker. At the culmination of the operational activity, Eight suspected terrorists were apprehended, including Hamas operative Dia Muhammad Yusuf Salma, who was responsible for carrying out recent attacks against Israeli security forces. During the course of the arrest, which took place in the town of Jenin, a large number of Palestinian militants opened fire toward the Israeli forces, who responded with live fire. Palestinian health authorities subsequently announced that two Palestinians were killed, including a member of the Iranian proxy Palestinian Islamic Jihad and a doctor who sought to retrieve the body. It is worth noting that visuals purporting to show the reported incident shows Palestinian militants firing toward IDF troops from behind a wall while a Red Crescent ambulance is exposed less than a meter away. And while the RDF responded that the presence of uninvolved civilians in combat areas poses a life-threatening danger, it also noted that an investigation has been launched into this incident. Moreover, thankfully, no injuries were reported to the Israeli troops. Turning to Kazakhstan, where Russian President Vladimir Putin hosted Palestinian President Mahmoud Abbas on the sidelines of the sixth summit of the so-called CICA, during which he highlighted Russia's unchanging support for a two-state solution to the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. 
The Palestinian leader for his part praised Russia's unwavering support for the Palestinians, while further emphasizing that the Palestinian Authority will not accept the United States' so-called monopolizing mediation efforts and highlighted that a negotiating solution must be advanced by the Middle East Quartet, which includes the United Nations, Russia, the European Union and the United States. Do you know about our stance in this regard? We do not want to see the Americans under any kind of disguise, under any kind of umbrella to try to resolve the Palestinian settlement unilaterally. It can be part of the court, it can play a certain, play a certain part within the court. It, but as for monopolizing the matter of settlement, we will never accept that. The Palestinian leader further highlighted his distrust of the Americans and thanked his Russian counterpart for Moscow's help in training the Palestinian Authority's diplomatic corps and other experts. While the U.S. State Department did not immediately respond to TV7's request for comment, it is worth noting that the United States under the Biden administration has provided the Palestinian Authority with hundreds of millions of dollars since January of this year alone, as opposed to Russia, which granted the Palestinian Authority a one-time grant of $10 million in 2019. Turning to Lebanon, where President Michel Aoun made a televised address to the nation, during which he proclaimed that after 10 years of negotiations, a deal on demarcating Lebanon's southern maritime border with Israel has borne fruit. <laughs> سوف تتناول موضوعا واحدا يتعلق بالمفاوضات الشاقة والصعبة التي خاضها لبنان في السنوات العشر الماضية لترسيم حدوده البحرية الجنوبية واستخراج نفطه والتي وصلت إلى نهاية إيجابية أتمنى أن تكون بداية واعدة تضع الحجر الأساس the Lebanese head of state further asserted that the agreement met all of Beirut's demands, including claims on a maritime territory of 860 square kilometers. <laughs> في هذا الإنجاز الذي ما كان ليتحقق لو لوحدة الموقف اللبناني وصلاباته في مقاومة كل الضغوط وفي عدم تقديمه أي تنازلات جوهرية وعدم دخوله في أي نوع من أنواع التطبيع المرفوض من حق لبنان أن يعتبر أن ما تحقق بالأمس هو إنجاز تاريخي لأننا تمكننا من استعادة مساحة 860 كيلومترا مربعا كانت موضع نزاع ولم يتنازل لبنان عن أي كيلومتر واحد لإسرائيل It is worth noting that while Israeli officials repeatedly highlighted American guarantees that Lebanon's expected benefits of its newly acquired offshore gas reservoirs would not reach the Iranian proxy Hezbollah President Aoun's son-in-law, former Lebanese Foreign Minister Jibran Basil, who is sanctioned by the United States over his business ties with both Hezbollah and Iran, revealed that he was heavily involved in the negotiations. Moreover, Basil acknowledged Hezbollah's involvement in the talks. I was in uh, direct and continuous contact with many people, and Hezbollah and other than Hezbollah and uh, this is quite uh, normal. This has happened all the time. While well, stopping short from elaborating on whom these other parties are, Basil also highlighted that the U.S. sanctions against him would ultimately be lifted since he regards them as unjustified. Meanwhile, in Washington, U.S. State Department spokesman Ned Price emphasized that the Israeli-Lebanese deal will stabilize the region and insisted that it showcases the importance of Washington's role as a global leader and broker. This deal uh, will create 
uh, a region that is more stable, a region that's more prosperous, uh, a region that is more uh, integrated. It showcases uh, the ultimately uh, the indispensability of uh, American leadership and uh, American diplomacy. This was the consequence of more than a decade of concerted effort on the part of successive administrations. Uh, and this was something that uh, this administration uh, put a lot of uh, sweat into helping to facilitate not only to advance uh, opportunity and prosperity for Israel uh, and Lebanon, but also uh, to see to it uh, that once fully implemented, the region is better integrated. That ultimately is in the interests of a more stable uh, region, uh, of a region that is potentially less prone to conflict. Now, of course, uh, this deal does establish a permanent maritime uh, boundary, but it doesn't constitute normalization between Israel and Lebanon. Uh, it uh, doesn't settle all of the land disputes between Israel uh, and Lebanon. So we will continue to be a constructive force uh, between and with uh, these two countries and a constructive force in the region more broadly. Thank you for watching TV7 Israel News. I would like to highlight our appreciation for TV7 Israel's family of supporters. TV7 Israel is a donation-based ministry, and therefore, your financial contribution enable us to sustain our ongoing operations here in Jerusalem. Additionally, I would like to encourage you to pray for our persecuted brothers and sisters worldwide and for the peace of Jerusalem and salvation of Israel. I'm Jonathan Hassan, wishing you a Chag Sukkot Sameach and Shabbat Shalom, and we will see you again on Monday at the same time.